Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the One Duplicant Challenge. In the previous episodes we prepared ourselves to be able to ship over some food for resin production and also receive back the ISO resin directly from the source. I'm tuning in right now because we actually shot our first shot. If we have a look at that, uh, the payload is on its merry way and there's some food in it for the tree. So we might want to bear witness to this event. Now you give me a couple of ideas as to what we could do in terms of ranches here that would not require us to do a lot of maintenance, but we could still keep a steady food supply going. The main two suggestions were a shove wall ranch or a fish ranch. And I kind of like the idea of a fish ranch because even if fish don't feel well and don't have food, they are still gonna lay one egg per fish. At least I believe that's how it works according to your comments. So imagine we have a mini printing pot somewhere up here and then a puddle of liquid. Every time we get fish from the printing pot, we will spawn them right here and accumulate a good amount of fish. We're gonna leave this open towards the top so there is no restrictions in room size and each of these fish is hopefully gonna lay one egg per lifetime. Also, I decided to go ahead and improve on that system. We just received the payload opener. Yeah, we're gonna make our way back to this planetoid in today's episode. I also accumulated a couple of resources. But here are our frozen food deliveries. Maybe we'll have to make it just a tad colder because I believe some of them are now over temperature. No, actually all the important food is in a deep frozen state, so we're okay. Either way, another thing we have to solve in today's episode is not only the food production, but this room actually failed and it it's just because of these mechanized airlocks. I bet you if I used steel, it wouldn't be that much of a problem. The problem is the heat transfer rate with gold amalgam isn't great and therefore it takes a really long time until this sensor detects the heat. And by the time the sensor is heated up sending the signal, the metal tile here is already heated up to the maximum. And then this metal tile just keeps on emitting heat like crazy. So what I did is I went back in here and actually made sure to have a couple of things available to me. For instance, we now have three tons of steel. We can build these doors out of steel. We also have a little bit more glass for additional solar panels. And I also brought with me a wart seed, including 20 tons of phosphorite in order to supply it. And this way we will be able to make a much better system here on the top. And this wrap bolt generator doesn't have to waste as much energy to fill up the interplanetary launcher. So it's going to be disabled a lot of the time. Right now it is constantly sucking 480 watts. So now there's one more thing we need to do before we leave. And that is to dump a little bit of water, I would say. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. And uh, there it is. That's already enough. Perfect. So we can disable this. And this should then make sure the stuff here on the top is being cooled as well. We just have to connect the cooling loop now. Um, let me see. That was to enter the coolant, right? So yeah, let's maybe get rid of that bridge just to get rid of the confusion as well. And then as of this point, we want to move up. Why did I remove that? Okay, well, we'll have to fix that pipe, but then it goes back and there is the finished loop. Now something that I just realized in the comments, someone suggested to additionally have a steam turbine here just to be on the safe side. But you know what? We could use the steam turbine to delete the freaking steam. I mean, that's what it's for. Why am I using mechanized airlocks to delete steam if I can just suck it out? I guess I figured since we only need to go to the bare minimum of a steam turbine, it's not worth it. But we have all the way up to 200 degrees before we actually convert the resin into naphtha. I don't think we're gonna need all this shebang. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. So let's make our way back. Uh, is there anything else I need fixing? This is now all working. Good, good, good. Okay, we are gonna make our way back. Let's hope I did not forget anything. Well, honestly, it wouldn't matter because the travel time is extremely short. Come on, come on, guy. Yes, good journey. And just check out the piloting skills here. Already at 62. Did that actually change something about our speed, for instance? No, still 3.3 tiles. Well, looks like we're almost there. Let's check this out. Azista. Ooh, there's gonna be some more carbon dioxide. What was she gonna do? Uh, actually, that wasn't even that bad, right? However, I think to prevent this in the future, all we have to do is encase this and then the carbon dioxide will not be able to make it to the planetoid. Now let's see, I think I'm gonna switch things around a little bit so I can take the auto sweeper downstairs. And then on this side, I'm gonna build something to supply the rat bolt generator with a more efficient system. 
That means first getting rid of this and can we cut this loop down? Yeah, I think we can just go straight over. Okay, very good. The loop is fixed. We can get rid of that. We can also get rid of these two tiles. And now what I want to see is the beacon move one over. Actually, does that make sense? No, wait, we just need to have the auto sweeper right here. Yeah, this way we can cover everything. Honestly, this is way better. And now all we need is to supply this rapple generator with a more steady source. Let me actually see, get rid of that. Let's maybe also get rid of these uh, pedestals and move these over. I'm then probably gonna replace this tile here with a farm tile. We need one additional auto sweeper and then I guess just a storage chest. If I get 20 tons of phosphorite into this storage bin, let's go ahead and plant a Weezwort. Okay, that actually worked. Now let's see if we can also cover it with a little bit of liquid, since we also need to cool down this auto sweeper. Empty another packet here, just one, thank you. And then you can empty this jug. Okay, looks like this is gonna work. Now, oh, I see a problem, of course. The water is gonna freeze over. Also, we should disallow manual use. By the way, this is a mod, you might not have that. The mod is called allow manual use and I can just disable that so my dupe is not gonna take care of it. And what we might want to do is expand this cable all the way to the auto sweeper. And this way the auto sweeper isn't gonna provide any new phosphorite in case we have a long period of nothing happening. However, the freezing is gonna be an issue. We might have to use a different liquid or I guess alternatively we could have it up there, this might actually make more sense. We will not get as many rats. This is, I believe, the best spot you can go for. But what if we had this guy right on top of here? We would still be getting plenty of radiation. Yeah, I think we got to try. So uproot that and plant the new seed on the top. There we go. Okay, let's see. We had a 680 rats per cycle here. 555, 485, ooh, 226. So it is dramatic. But this way at least nothing is influenced temperature wise. Okay, just to test things out, I'm gonna try it one block lower. Good, with the block lowered we go from the 618 all the way down to 551. If we turn around the rapple generator, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we want this to be facing the other way so we can profit a little bit more from the tile up there. That means we need to expand this cable and what about the power cable as well. And then we wanna shoot right over here. Okay, I think that makes sense. We now profit from the increased radiation here. It's just one tile away from the maximum load. And then what I would like to see is this temperature not going down. Yeah, I don't think the Weezwort can influence this. If we put this one more block down, I believe that would be the point where the Weezwort is capable of also affecting the water here on the ground. But now that this isn't the case, let's expand the cooling loop all the way over. We'll empty one more bottle packet here and then we should be golden. Okay, now we leave the phosphorite here and if I'm not mistaken, this, wow, okay, this only requires four kilograms a cycle. Let's have a proper look at that. 20,000 kilograms is what I took with me divided by four kilograms will give us a grand total of 5,000 cycles before we have to resupply the phosphorite and that is active cycles. Of course, doesn't count all the times when the systems lay dormant. So yeah, I take that. Let's go ahead and take care of the bottom part now. Do I want to pump this out again? It might be worth it, but then on the other side, I still have a little bit of steam in here. Yeah, let's actually go with that steam turbine idea. If we set up a steam turbine right here, then I could go ahead, set up a joint plate. Let's put that right here, connect up the steam turbine. And we also limit this here on the other side. We can then go ahead, extract the liquid, then we either collect it somewhere or we just destroy it. I'm actually kind of tempted to still collect it and the reason for that is I just want to know how much accumulates over a couple of hundred cycles or a thousand or two thousand. But then I have nothing better to do with this water. Maybe we're just gonna use it to cool down the hydrogen vent in the future. That might be more elegant. Either way, I think we have to speed up the pumping of gases again. Should be built fairly quickly and it's gonna help. However, it would be nice to get that steam turbine going because the rest of the steam we have in here is over 200 degrees, which means we can pump it out. And then I kind of want to prevent this door from closing while we are doing some work. So I'm gonna set this to, hmm, if it is below 9000, then we want to open it up. So it's always gonna remain open now. 
Okay then, I finished building all the piping and the cooling loop is now being redirected through the steam turbine. We just have to make sure that we are actually cooling it down by maybe also emptying a pipe right there. I'm actually gonna do three or two at least. And now we can empty this out and hopefully cool down the steam turbine right away without, well, a little bit of steam, but that's okay. While we are waiting for the vacuum to accumulate, I would like to move this liquid tank. Now, it still needs to be in this row. So after the liquid reservoir, it goes directly into the aqua tuner. So I'm probably just gonna add that right here and then we can start filling that up instead. Ooh, can I do it before bedtime? Come on, no! <laughs> Either way, the next thing is gonna be to build a wall right there and this is gonna be our fish tank. Then what we're gonna need is a mini printing pod. However, I want to build it in a way so that I cannot actually reach it. Otherwise, I'm gonna commit to my downtime, which would be horrible. So honestly, I think I'm just gonna add it here on the top and then we are gonna remove access to it again. If I build it right here, for instance, then the fish that I'm spawning are gonna flop down into the pool where they should be safe. And then water can now go into this direction. Inspect the pod that we just built and activate it. Come on, guy. And remove the data bank and remove these ladders. Wonderful. The next thing I'm gonna need is access to the polluted water, which we're then gonna convert and just fill this up. I don't wanna commit the water that I have inside the reservoir. That is to keep the loop at a steady temperature. So I think I should be able to just set up a little something here temporarily, give myself access to power, and we're gonna set up the sieve halfway inside the polluted water. You go right there, wonderful. I'm gonna need a pump as well. Get that right here and then just connect it to the water sieve and water can be coming out. Let's actually remove this part of the piping. We then bring this all the way over and right here, I guess we can dump it. Not enough materials, that's not good. We need to switch to granite. So dump the water right there. Yeah, that's gonna be good. We finished emptying the water reservoir here. I'm now disassembling it. Let's see what we get in the printing pot. Look at that. Oh, this is just amazing. Well, it's not a rare occurrence that I'm getting fish, but it's nice to have them right now. So we do have to get started with everything. And oh no, it's a little bit too much below the water here. In this case, I think I'm just gonna raise it up, but I'm gonna build normal tasks. So we have a layer of liquid on the top. Uh, that did not really turn out the way I wanted it to, but I'm guessing until this overheats, we'll have converted enough liquid to fill up the pool with enough water. Water. Never mind, this is overheating rather quickly. So I think what I'm gonna do is have an additional pump and maybe a bottle emptier here so I can take care of that. But we're already at 80 degrees. In the pump, polluted water, enable auto bottle, make this really quick, like so. And now, well, I guess this should help. Good, with that out of the way, let's spawn a bunch of pakus. Yes, come to papa and they should just naturally flop into here. No issues whatsoever. And we are starting with eight of them. Yeah, man, boots, 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 boots. You can do it, you can do it. Very nice. Now they're still flopping around here. I'm not sure, I think they should survive. In terms of solar panels, we might be able to get an additional one in here and then protect it with some obsidian tiles. In terms of solar panels, we could have gotten two more in if I arrange this a little bit better. So I think we're gonna have to make do with one additional, but we'll also have to set up a protective layer here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, let me uh, remove these. Hooray, the fish can finally swim. They are still overcrowded. However, within the 25 cycles they live, they should produce one egg. But it might be dependent on other conditions. I'm not sure. Maybe they don't do it if they are overcrowded already. Well, either way, we will be needing an auto sweeper. Let's put this maybe here. And we're also gonna be needing a conveyor loader right there. It would have been nice to grab the power from the bottom, but I don't want to mess with the vacuum I have going on. So instead, we're gonna take the cabling and do this. And of course, we then want to directly ship the food over to our trusty resin producing tree. Alrighty, finally, we achieved a vacuum again. I thought this day would never come. Once again, I'm gonna try to clean everything up because that's just what I do. And then we should be able to enter this room again. Let's do this. We're gonna go in from here and rearrange a couple of things. First and foremost, the mechanized airlocks, they can go. We're only gonna use this metal tile now to heat things up. This also means we don't need any complicated automation to delete the gases. I accidentally took apart the wrong automation. Of course, this closes the door. I should not have removed the knot gate. 
Though I still think we can save it if we do something like this and remove those guys, get rid of that conveyor loader to get some steel. Actually, the conveyor loader needs to be done immediately and then the knot gate. Uh, dude, I want you to take care of the knot gate. Okay, that's good. Now, this metal tile is a little bit hot. So what I would like to see is a thermo sensor right there. It will first go into a filter gate. Give me copper right there. So from the sensor into to the filter gate and then the knot gate. In this case I'm gonna remove certain temp shift plates such as the one at the top and at the bottom and instead I'm gonna add another one here. The thermo sensor should be set to above 125 degrees. That's when we want to open the door. Wait a second, in this case we don't even need the knot gate. Yeah, what am I doing? Uh, what happens if I deconstruct this now? Hopefully it gets pushed up. I fear... <gasps> No, we're all good. So what we can do is go directly from the sensor to the filter gate that I built out of steel because it's touching the door. And then we can set this to below because right now we are in a vacuum and it's not very representative. I'm still gonna need my conveyor loader somewhere along these lines. And now if I close up this gap, I should be able to convert some of the resin into naphtha. It's gonna fill up this tile permanently with the thermo sensor and the naphtha is never gonna move out of the way. Then the rest is either gonna be covered with resin or the iso resin and then filled up with steam. And maybe we want to limit the steam turbine so we always have a certain amount of gases inside the steam room. If we, for instance, set up a Atmos sensor right below this, we can send the signal directly up to the steam turbine, which is gonna enable or disable it, depending on how much steam we already have in the room. The sensor I wanna set to send a green signal if we are, let's say, above five kilograms. Is that good? Mm, let's test it. But this is gonna allow us to always have enough steam in here to either regulate the temperature and also interact with this door but I still think it's gonna be safer to let the first iso resin just turn into naphtha and remain in this tile. As I was bringing up the materials, I did manage to create a little bit of steam, but that doesn't really matter to us. And um, before I forget, this hydro sensor needs to go. Good, the contraption is closed again. Let's check the piping. Yeah, that goes to the right slot. I'm gonna set the hydro sensor to start pumping above 50 kilograms. Good, we're starting to pump down the resin. Now, I noticed there might be a little bit of an issue here with the copper sensor. I did not actually think about that because the metal tile is so hot. As soon as we get the first resin, this might go above the melting point. Yeah, it's a thousand degrees. Let me test that just in case I'm wrong. I don't want to actually go in there and fix that, but I will make a safe game at this point in case I'm not wrong. <laughs> I just know one thing right now. I don't want the door to close at all. So we'll have to set up an impossible setting or a setting that is always the case. So in case we are below the 9000 degrees, we want to send a green signal. Okay, now nothing should happen theoretically. Resin is incoming. Good. Oh man. Okay, this actually goes rather quickly and we are losing some heat. Ooh, doo -doo. Okay, okay, okay. I think we just did it in the nick of time. I'm still glad I made a safe game here. Yeah, this is now cooling down. Okay, very nice, very nice. And then this is sending a green signal because we are at eight kilograms of steam already. So now the steam turbine is expelling the hot water right there. And we could potentially use that as mentioned for the hydrogen vent later on. Good, now before I mess this up again, we should pick up the iso resin. I'm just gonna set this to all and then do that, that and that. Get the iso resin out of the way. Okay, yeah, looks like we did it. So my plan did not actually add up of creating some naphtha here, but together with the Atmo sensor, we also have always about five kilograms of steam in here, which should be enough to do the detection and everything. Good, in this case, we can now set this to the right temperature, which is 125 degrees. No, if we are above that, we wanna open up the door. Wait, what, are you serious? That was just a split second. Good, we're back at the same exact spot, but this time I did not set it to the wrong setting, not even for a second. Now, I see one problem here with my design, and that is I probably should have gone with the knot gate, simply because the opening process needs to happen quite immediately, and now it is delayed by five seconds. So I might want to lower this to 0.5 seconds or something that is just very quick, so that is probably why I originally wanted the knot gate, so the signals are inversed and the thing that is delayed is the closing process and not the opening process. 
the Pacos in the meantime are doing well. I guess this is gonna take a little while until this kicks in, but I'm gonna make sure to now always spawn more Pacos until we have enough. Oh, before I forget, I also installed a mechanized airlock here with a timer sensor, just 5 seconds versus 600 seconds, so this opens once a cycle and leaves potential food that I'm spawning right here drop into the pool. The auto sweeper will be able to pick it up and automatically deliver it to the tree. The tungsten volcano is gonna become active in 14 cycles. Until then, I don't think we have anything else to do on this world. I guess one thing we could do is go in here and finally pick up these items. And just like that, everything is fixed. Okay, nice. I'm gonna make my way back to the home planetoid. Let's see if we are lucky here with the printing pot. Come on, come on, come on. Please give me something nice. No. Well, we do get a little bit of food so we can see the process here. Maybe let me reset the timer, speed things up a little bit. It should be picked up. Oh, okay. Nathan picked that up. That is fine. But when I'm not around, the auto sweeper is going to do it. Food is moving to the tree. Tree is eating, ping out some resin. And then as soon as we go above the 50 kilograms, we should be seeing some pumping action. Come on. And there is the pumping action not that dramatic of a pumping action though but we still get two packets that are immediately being converted and because we get the extra steam some of the steam is being brought out now of course we are still above the 125 degrees that i set this to eventually i might upgrade this to 100 and 30 degrees or so because I don't know we'll have to see it in action first right now I still have enough heat remaining in the room to keep things going it also looks like I don't have any more filtration medium I did not think of that of course but yeah I would say with that out of the way we're gonna wrap it up this planetoid is pretty much finished in case this idea here works and then maybe we just get about 32 or so fish in there we just need a steady source hopefully with too many fish they will not actually start to slow things down because they cannot really go anywhere there's not much pathing for the fish to do but yeah thank you so much for watching guys i really hope you enjoyed it have a great time and see you in the next one bye bye